after all of the hype and hullabaloo from our first season, Pilot Pass is back for round number two. Hello, and my name is Matthew Pizzana, co-host of the internet sensation that is Pilot Pass. Alongside me, as always, is my esteemed co-host, Dell. Don't call me Rashomon Pullen. Dell, how are you today? Well, that's how you remember it. I remember it as uh, you should call me Rashomon. <laughs> so there's a, I guess there's a little bit of a disagreement there of how we remember things. I hope people get that joke. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> if don't, go get Rashomon. There you go. Uh, so tell me, what are we here to do in today, sir? I believe we are going to be looking at the TV show Veep, which is basically a reworking of the British show The Thick of It by um, Armano Iannucci, who's worked, uh, you know, with uh, the Alan Par I'm Alan Parsons, um, did the movie uh, in the in the Loop, um, and he's known yeah, Death of Stalin. He's known for writing great comedic political satire. So. Um, yeah, this show is amazing, and I remember I took me. I came in on like season three or four, um, and was just you know three or four years in. I I watched the pilot, and I was like, "Whoa, how, why have I not been watching this?" So um, this is definitely something. It's an HBO show, and I just can't believe that it took me that long to catch on. You're behind the times as always. Yep, but that's okay because today we're catching up with Veep. Now, have you seen the finale? I have seen all the episodes. Okay, I love here. how yeah, the, the, uh, the first episode <laughs> ties to the last episode. We won't yeah. tell you how, but it definitely yeah. ties together. Um, and then everything in between. Um, Selena Gomez is such a great and wonderful character for Julia Louis-Dreyfus. I think that um, this was perfect. This was almost made for her in a way. Yeah, I think, um, especially after doing uh, Elaine on Seinfeld, um, this was, you know, people love roles. I'm finding out that comedians, especially after they play nice roles, not that she was particularly nice in Seinfeld, but when they play clean roles, love playing vicious, dirty, cussing roles a lot. <laughs> and uh, this one definitely let her uh, swear to her card's content. There are curse words that I have never heard before in this series uh, that I and, and the way she uses it, I, I've heard it would make grown, you know, 40 year old construction men blush at the way she talks sometimes it's amazing it is crazy it's uncomfortable and it's wonderful and it's magical so veep the show uh follows the vp selena gomez as she puts out political fires juggles her uh, public schedule and we say that is vice president of the entire united states yes that is uh v potus as it were yeah um and she does everything within her limited powers to improve her dysfunctional relationship with the chief executive my favorite bit in the show Sue, did the president call? I love <laughs> yeah. it every time she does that. Yeah, one of the things that I, um, Inuit said they wanted to do was they never say which party she's for, so it's let them that way you can you you can kind of place her on whatever side you want, and then they never show the president, and he was very clear about never wanting to do that in the beginning uh, to never actually have the president ever shown in the show because like it's about the vice president. There's a show, other show like that. What is that other TV show that did that? That they had a big character. They're like, uh, you never get to see him, but they always talk about him. I, I you know, I can't. Think of well, I guess technically Charlie's Angels was like that. Like you didn't get to see um, Bosley. Did I say that? Is, well, I, I guess Inspector Gadget. You only see the back of Doctor Claw mm -hmm. or his hand. You know. See, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Long line of great not seeing the bad guys. <laughs> I love that. Uh, Del, will you tell the people what the first episode that we watched, the pilot episode entitled Fundraiser, is all about? Sure. So uh, VP Selena Myers wants to make uh, the implementation of a clean jobs commission her main legacy. Um, of course, one thing she's frustrated by is, you know, is not being the president. She has a very limited role in the government. It's kind of whatever is handed to her. She's allowed to do. So she's looking to do something to really cement her legacy as the first female vice president. Um, but then a tweet from her staffer uh, annoys the plastic <laughs> industry, and she makes an offensive joke at the fundraiser. Her chief of staff uh, for, um, forgets to put her own name on a condolence card <laughs> for the wife of a senator who just died, yes. and they try to get the card back. So it's – I mean, the, the whole thing's a farce. It's, uh, it's, it's a comedy of errors, too, um, and just a real satire. But it's kind of like Scrubs. It, from what I hear, people are like, "That's the this is the most realistic portrayal of politics that I've ever seen." 
Definitely. That, that's, I agree with that assessment. Um, I'm curious, we didn't talk about any intros, I believe, last year. So let's go ahead and just right off the bat, I love the intro for the show because it tells you everything you know, need to know about Selena Myers. Like yeah. they never have her run up to being vice president. That's all in the credits. You see that yeah. she's up and that she's maybe going to win. She's going to be president. Well, and it's fails. newspapers floating by as they play the theme song. And so it says she runs for president. <laughs> and then she ends up being, you know, plays as vice president for uh, the whoever the president is. And that party wins and she becomes the first female vice president. And you can see her face getting happier and happier and then sadder, sadder, and then angrier <laughs> as she realizes that she's going to be relegated to being VP. Um, and like she says later in the series when she wants to run, you know, there's no way in burning hell I'll ever be a vice president of the United States again. It's mm-hmm. the most worthless job in the country. And it, it seems to be uh, that way for her through, throughout the season. Yeah. Perfectly encapsulated. And then this first one, there's a, uh, a fork. Are we trying to get a soy fork involved in the situation? That, that's what she's trying to argue for, I believe, in the, uh, at her fundraiser, right? You know, it's a cardboard fork or, or something like that. Something but absurd was, and ridiculous. Yeah, it was the whole idea was it was, you know, it was supposed to, to help the environment. But they're like, yeah, but, you know, whatever is made out of plastic. And you know who makes plastic? That's oil. <laughs> and you know who has all the fucking money? Oil. oil. So that's, you know, they, um, that's that's explained to her that she just pissed off, of course, one of the biggest lobbying groups um, in all of America. Uh, we should say that some of the other people on her staff are people like Matt Walsh from Upright Citizens Brigade. Um, that's her, is that her chief of staff or is that her, uh, uh Amy is the chief of staff. A- Amy is the chief of staff. Matt Walsh is the, uh, head of communications, communications director. Yeah. I believe communications director. Uh, but people like Martin Mull, Hugh Laurie, once again, playing an American, uh, I always love when a British guy plays an American mm-hmm. uh, who is who's later in the show runs uh, for president as well. Um, Tony Hale from Arrested Development is her personal assistant. Um, you recognize just about everybody in the show. And, and in a sense, that's always nice, too, that they went and got some some heavyweights, you know, that they knew were going to be able to pull this off. I think this was the first time I saw Timothy Simons in a character as well. He plays Jonah. Um, he went on to do yes. um, the other show, Silicon he Valley. Probably, he's in that as well, and I always make me laugh. He's in he's in Silicon Valley. I thought so, right? Did I make that up? The wait, Jonah is the is he the tall the guy? tall goofy one? Yes, from the yeah, White okay. House. From the from the White House. From he's the White, the White House. Yeah, he's always bragging he's from the <laughs> White House, but of course nobody gives a shit about him. Um, but what is he in in Silicon Valley? Maybe dude, he I is, could be right? completely making that up. We'll, okay. we'll live time figure this out. You you riff for a while. Okay. Let me figure this out. Okay. See if I just you lie to out. everybody. So, uh, but he ended up, he ended up being my favorite character of the entire show. Um, not only by the end, but I mean even in the pilot, I was like, whoever this guy is, like, what an asshole, what a dick. You hate him from the moment you meet him. You hate him more than almost any other character in the entire show. Um. Do they introduce the guy that makes his assistant say that he's gay and likes eating cum and sucking men off? I don't Is think that that introduced the first one. No, I don't Okay, think that so. may have been the second episode. That's a great character, too. Um, Boy, I made, yeah, I made that, that up. I don't know okay, what I was thinking. Did. I made that up. <laughs> Sorry, team. That's on me. That's my bad. Oh, he's okay. in the new Home Alone, so that's exciting. Is it? No. No, it's not. Sorry, I tried. I tried to say. Well, it. good for him though. Hey, he's still taking home a paycheck. Good for him. He's doing better than I am in Hollywood right now. Yeah, no kidding. High five to him. So, um, the cornstarch yeah, show... forks. That's what it is. It's a cornstarch okay. fork. Corn okay. Yes. So let's talk a little bit about. Um, well, the thick of it was, like I said, the British version of it, um, and it starred. Um, oh my gosh, I can't think of the guy's name right now. But he, uh, it, uh, Peter Capaldi, who ended up being one of the uh, Doctor Who's um the 13th doctor something like that ah no matter anyway and of course he's hilarious in it um but the idioms are so hard to understand i laughed at the show there's only like three or four episodes per season there's only like two or three seasons so it's very short like 10 episodes total um but some of the some of the the languages the the turns of phrases i just didn't get and it was funny because the show was they were originally going to try to remake the thick of it just in as an American version, just like they did with the office. And it just, it didn't translate. It didn't work very well at all. And HBO said, well, why don't you just create a whole new show about the American system? And so Ianucci went back and, and created Veep. And I think it's a much better idea than trying to, you know, rework something you've already done. Why not create something new 
with a whole new system. I think that was a, a great idea. Yeah, keep the idiots, but change the politics. It's all still <laughs> the same. It's just a little bit different on how we approach it. Yeah, and they definitely are assholes too. Like even her personal assistant is uh, Tony Hale is a bit of a dick and he's probably the nicest sweetest guy in the entire show yeah um everybody kicks everybody everybody insults everybody everybody talks throws everybody else under the bus there's nobody that's safe um i, I just and, and through the seasons the way they get they get moved around and bumped around and rearranged uh was just fantastic too but the pilot itself um let's talk about that was just so strong because immediately you see her, Selena's personality. She is a fiercely strong woman. Uh, she has a lesbian daughter um, that she doesn't care about at all. She has just her political ambitions. She doesn't care about uh, anybody else in her life except the desire to be president. Um, so much so that later in the season, later in the final season, she actually does something that ends up hurting her daughter um, to the point where. And I don't want to go, well, we won't go that far, but she even throws her own daughter under the bus multiple times in the show to, in her attempt to become president of the United States of America. So she is a real bastard. Let's put it that way. Um, loves cussing, but how much fun, like we were saying, that must be for Julia uh, Louis-Dreyfus to be able to just swear like the meanest sailor, like a, a sailor had sex with a filthy, filthy pirate. And that, 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 that that's her. My first introduction to Ianucci was in the loop. And when James Gandolfini starts yelling and cursing in that movie, I was on the floor laughing so hard. It was just the absurdity of government in and of itself is really kind of, you know, something that he loves to do a highlight. But then when yeah. you add those those curse words to it and you think of all these people as well, you used to think all these people as respectable and, you know, they, they were politicians. Yeah, I'd say, the, I'd say the last four years have kind of changed what we think of the decorum of a some of the higher levels of politics. Yes. Um, but, yeah, because, you know, even the death of Stalin, you know, you think these people must have been, you know, Trotsky and them very high up. And, no, they're, they're still just people running around with real feelings and emotions that are running high. Um, so to see them portrayed that way is very flawed people. I love that about how, the, how he uh, how he arranges his character. Did you have a favorite moment from this first episode? There was a lot of highlights. We got to see a little bit of all the characters, and they all had their own certain moments. But there was there one point that you really enjoyed? Yeah, and uh, I'm glad you actually wrote it down here because this, this is my uh, favorite line from the pilot. Um, she's at, she tells Gary, her personal assistant, to let her know when somebody's coming in and going to be coming up and talking to her. <laughs> and this person starts walking over, and he's like, you know, it's Mr. So-and-so. And she's like, I have large moving shapes covered, okay, Gary? <laughs> like, that line just <laughs> blew me away. Uh, yeah, like, go to, go, please go do something else. Like, she has no need for him. And yet she needs him. The, the episode ends with Gary telling her all the people that are in this giant line to come say hello to yeah. her. Yeah. So. Well, that's the other thing. She could not do her job without him. I mean, he basically carries her handbag and her purse the entire time. He is completely organized. All you know, he knows where her tampons are kept, her time of the month, where chapstick is. You know what her favorite lips. She, he knows more about her than anybody else in the entire world. I mean, he knows her favorite brand of lipstick, her favorite color. Um, he's always got everything stocked up, um, and so he and and you could tell he truly loves her. Like there's a love there and it may not, yeah. it may not even be romantic. Maybe it is, but he just has such an admiration and adoration for her that no other character has. And you can, he, you can really feel it that when she yells at him, he feels hurt like a dog getting kicked, but oh, definitely he, but he's happy to be around her like in an abusive relationship. You know? Yes, completely, completely. Um, I don't remember who even said it or what context it was in, but somebody said, <laughs> told somebody to get pencil fucked and that really uh, amused, <laughs> amused me to no end and uh, there's just so many good one-liners throwing out each other um, like, there are stuff i've never used to people just throwing like a, a motherfucker you know or a shit and there are just so many ways descriptive ways of how to insert things into the body or what to do with them or how things should come out or where a person could put part of themselves you know mm -hmm. and and in what violent manner they might do it in just ways that i and some of them are just like um there's one where she says I, I can't remember the episode um but she actually gets the the insult backwards 
and I, they just left it in. And she, instead of saying she's like, you're a dumb fuck, she's like, you're a fun duck. Right. And they, they something like that. And they leave it in. And so I don't know if it was just an accident they left it or if they wrote that line the way, because I could honestly believe they would write the line to just be wrong. Too. Right. Uh, my favorite moment is uh, you talked about Gary and his special bag earlier. Um, so <laughs> Selena's at the podium and she realizes that she's too short for the podium. So Gary, having everything in the world in that bag, pulls out a little box that selena stands on <laughs> and that uh, just pops it's like it mary out. poppins bag yes. anything she needs he always has it right there um, but then the extra little bit that they add <laughs> is the guy that spoke before selena also stood on the box so it looked absurd that he was having to lean way down to talk on the mic yeah <laughs> right <laughs> I actually forgot about that part. So uh, now I, let's talk about Mike, a.k.a. fucking Mike, because every time Mike comes in the room in the pod, they're like, oh, it's fucking Mike. Fucking, fucking Mike. Mike. Oh, fucking Mike. He gets uh, so much abuse for just trying to do his job. <laughs> and he really does. Like, he has a family at home. He's trying to adopt, like, kids from another nation. You know, he's... he's oh, hang he's, on. Pro- we, you, you, but you jumped the first, the most important part in the pilot episode. He has a dog at home. That's- that's that right. He has to go take care of. <laughs> yeah. And they're always, they're, she's like, just shoot the dog, Gary. You know, uh, just shoot the dog. Mike, you know, like, Jack, why do you have to run home to walk your dog? Can't you get somebody to do that? Um, but yeah, he's the only other kind of redeemable character in the show in the sense that, like, he really does, he has a wife and a family that he loves. He is honestly always trying to do his job. And I guess Sue, um, her. Mm, no nonsense, uh, Sue. Yeah, the uh, the assistant that sits outside and or the receptionist, I guess you should say. And uh, she's the one she always says, Sue, did, did the president call? No, Mrs. <laughs> Vice President. Um, but Sue does not give – yeah, no nonsense would be the best way. She'll insult everybody, and she can keep up with everybody, but she never breaks – she's a stone wall. Yep. Like she's never – she's never clever, but she's – and she's never witty, but she also is just like, shut up. Like, I'm, I'm just not going to have that. Go ahead. I'm not participating. Sit over, <laughs> sit over there. Yeah. <laughs> In one what of the episodes, ever... somebody asked her, uh, or she asked somebody, do I look like a, a kindergarten teacher? And they're like, mm, yeah, kind of. Kind of you do. That, yeah, <laughs> that was a good line. Uh, I think she had one. It, it was, I think this is her. Somebody comes in the room and she, they're like yelling at her. And she's like, uh-uh, walk back out and do that again. <laughs> 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 Talk to me. Can you envision or imagine the scenario where you get a condolence card for a senator and you're like, you know what, I have my assistant sign it and then they sign it with their name having to walk that back. <laughs> that sounds like the most uncomfortable conversation to ever have ever. And yet that's probably the most innocent thing that happens in the entire series. That's true. Too. Very um, much. But also it's just so weird that she just won't. There's certain things that just she, Selena won't do because she feels it beneath her. Like she could have just signed the card. It would have taken no time at all. Yep. But she will like take something in her hand, hold it that she could do something with right then and then turn to somebody else and be like, you handle this. It, making it, it so much more work for everyone else, including herself. And you know, something's going to go wrong. She just, in, unless it's part of being diplomatic or accepting an award or praise and adoration, you know, unless it feeds her ego, mm-hmm. um, like, like some politicians we know, you know, then she has zero interest. She doesn't care about doing it for the people. She flip flops on so many issues. She'll start at the beginning of episodes on one way and then just find out it's not popular. So she just swaps. That's it. Just that easy. She has no morals, no convictions. Um, there'll be times where she'll be for something, but somebody will offend her. So she just decided to be against them. That's it. That's, it doesn't matter. She's been working on that for eight years. If it would help that person, she's, she's not doing it. Um, and I just really, I see how I could, I just never would have, before four years ago, or in the last four years, I would have chalked it up to, boy, I mean, that's that's probably how close to how it is, but they're obviously overdoing it for TV. But then, you know, when you hear it and tweet it directly out how people are treating each other and you see, you know, from people themselves directly you know how they're interacting with other people you're like oh my god this isn't a stretch at all um it's almost like why the onion kind of became a little weird over the last four years and and veep started kind of turning because they're kind of like well what are we making fun of like everything what's funny is everything that i had seen on veep while uh obama was in office that you thought was a stretch Mm -hmm. happened 
when Trump was in office. Life like, is it, a satire it, now. It was crazy that all these insane things that were just way over the top literally happened later with a different president. And then, of course, so they had a pivot to kind of making her a little bit like him. She definitely becomes more, like they took, you could tell they based a little bit of her later off Trump because she becomes more narcissistic. She becomes um, more self aggrandizing. You know, she becomes um, just, she becomes so much more of a narcissist, you know, whereas before she was a little bit of one, I think they really were like, well, I mean, we've got to, if we're going to top it, we've got to top this now. And so they had to write even higher and even bigger, you know? Mm-hmm. So that must have been hard for them. I mean, it was when The Onion kind of, when the news got so weird that The Onion was like, you know, I would see Onion articles and be like, I don't know if this is a joke or not, even though it says The Onion. The onion yeah. Because mm-hmm. now this is p- totally feasible that this could have really happened. Dale, take a walk with me right now. We're going to climb. We're going to shimmy. We're going to shake. We're going to make it to the top of the mountain. What I need to know is, does anybody from this show come with us? Is this anybody's mountaintop performance show? Any of those kind of things? Start off at the top. Let's start with Julia Louis dreyfus Is this I her think, mountaintop? Yes. I think even though she's probably, I think at the beginning, she was probably still more well-known as um, Elaine from Seinfeld. But honestly, with her as the main character, I think this is probably the greatest thing she's ever done and probably will ever do. Um, I'll never not think of her as Selena Myers for the rest of my life. I'll never. Yeah, I just I don't see how you could get a better character than this. There's I, I, what who would hand you a script that would be more fun to play than this character. So, no, I got to say this is probably the top for her. Um, I got to say for almost everybody else, yeah, this would probably be their mountaintop too because a lot of these people aren't unknowns, but certainly being on this show is a, a pinnacle of television and, sure. and very well received, lots of awards. Um, maybe Tony Hale, I could say, was better in Arrested Development, although sure. he's great in this. Um, and let's say Matt Walsh has just done so much with Upright Citizens Brigade. He's worked on so many other shows. I don't think this is his pinnacle. I think founding the Upright Citizens of the Brigade was probably his his pinnacle. Is um, my girl I think, the top for Amy Bruckheimer? What is uh, when she did with Macaulay Culkin when they were adorable little children? Oh yeah. yes, this is better than than that. But I, that's right, I forgot that was her. That's is blasphemy. That where the bee stings him? I believe yes, it is. is that was, okay. I Just cried. Beast thing movie, Matt. <laughs> Didn't they try to think that they got AIDS from the toilet seat, or is that a different movie? I'm sure that's a different. They're probably thinking of the gate where they open a portal to hell by tossing a <laughs> rock down into a pit. Great horror movie, by the way. That's great. How not, about, not even a horror fan. I love that one. Is this the mountain top for political shows? Oh God, yeah, man, the, it's going to be hard, hard, hard to top this. Um, the West as Wing a TV for me. show. Is, Maybe uh, is I was gonna I was gonna say I could see West Wing, but only because it is a serious drama, and Aaron Sorkin is still probably a better writer and one of my all time favorite writers. Um, uh, yeah, West Wing might be better, but then this is just I don't know. This is sometimes it's just as good and covers the same issues as West Wing, just in an entirely different matter through a different lens. Um, I could easily see somebody handing both of these shows the same script. Mm. And saying, bring us back one of each of yours. I would love to see one script written and brought back, shot as the West Wing and shot as Veep and see how that that plays. In fact, you know, can we just pretend that the West Wing, he's president and she's his VP? Because I would like to pretend that this all happens in the same world. It's um, It's been fascinating to go back and watch the West Wing because you talked about this kind of having to adapt as Trump became uh, more part of what we're seeing in the news. But the West Wing, it's like you remember that the office used to have respect and there was things as such as decorum and those kind of things. Yeah. There was somebody to look up to, not just the president, but the people that are working for him that were trying to make us you know, have a better place to live. And um, that certainly changed nowadays. And it's weird. Yeah. Watched Somebody it put it the other day uh, to me, and uh, it's such a great line that I'm going to claim credit co- for it and not tell you who said it. But they said, you know, when we were younger, we were told anybody can be president. And when, 
we took that to mean was if you work hard enough, if you study hard enough, if you become the best at something, if you have values, if you really believe you want to help people, then you can attain that level at such a high level. You could work to be there. Anybody can do it. And it turns out really what they meant was literally any fucking person can apparently do it. You could walk down the street and grab a hobo in a tinfoil hat we found and it would he, he could have been a better president. I mean, that's crazy that such an austere posi position, you know, that was held by Washington and Lincoln. Literally, the position holds no, like, I know I don't think about, even with Biden now, I don't think of the position as something like, wow, the president of the United States of America. Imagine how illustrious and powerful that must be. I'm just like, eh, the I mean, look, I mean, Trump did it. So who cares? You know, it's like it's like I guess seeing like a magic trick and then being like, oh, the scarves are just stuffed down into a pocket in his jacket. If the guy really doesn't do magic. It literally is a trick. Oh, and anybody can do it if you know the trick. Like, it's just so weird that that position has lost that authority, you know, that austerity. It, that, that, that's crazy to me because now I'm really the position is fuck it. It, it it doesn't matter you know it just literally go get somebody off the street and put them in that position i don't care thank you everybody for joining us with meet the press today here with Dell and Matt. <laughs> uh no seriously uh that has been veep pallet pass we're at the end so there's one more question to ask Dell, would you recommend to the people based off the pilot episode called fundraiser to watch veep I would wholeheartedly, um, yes, absolutely, 10 out of 10. Um, it's not one of the best pilots I've ever seen, although it does do everything that you want. Um, luckily, they don't have to do a lot of world building in this. Most people know what the White House is like. Most people have seen something like the West Wing or, may, hey, remember, uh, that's my Bush? That's my the Bush, Comedy baby. Show. So, hey, we do that on the show. Tonight. So I think most people, there wasn't a lot of world building to do because most people – well, I thought most people knew how the government and civics and, and Congress and the executive branch worked. Um, but so really all they had to do was establish the characters and their relations, you know? Yep. And I think they did that just fine. Like you said, the opening credits established her perfectly. So we literally just jump right into the story and there's no real building to be done. You start from the beginning and every, you just kind of learn about these people as they go. Um, there's no big story arc, really. There's no let's go to Mordor. You know, there's no giant um, thing to accomplish that the series is working towards. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not the best in that sense, but it is so unbelievably funny, crass, filthy. I don't know. This is also one of the shows. Sometimes like the crassness can turn me off to a show if it's not well done. This is the kind of show that. It, the, man, anytime you want to use the word fuck, go to this show and watch it. You want you, cocksucker, dick. Those could just be used, you know, anybody can throw those words around. You want to see people doing it right and comedically. This is the show to watch how to curse, to curse well. I believe at one point in time, she referred to herself as having uh, lady balls hanging between her legs. Yeah. So. She's always telling people to suck her dick, you know? Um, there's a couple of times where, oh, I, I can't remember the episode, but she's like, he fucked me. I mean, not like that. I mean, he did last night, but he fucked me this morning when somebody uh, betrays her and goes on to like run for an office or something like that. Um, so she is <laughs> very aware of, of her lady bits, uh, but she she talks about them like, you know, she'll, she'll talk about her tits and her, her balls and her testicles. No problem. A lot of anatomy in this uh, show, yeah. so Dale's saying a lot of anatomy. Dale, can you tell the people how they find us if they want to find us on the World Wide Webs? Well, soon we're going to be having the website up, of course. Um, but right now, you can go to Twitter, uh, Pilot Pass Pod. Uh, everything else is just Pilot Pass. Facebook.com um, slash Pilot Pass. Uh, Instagram, Pilot Pass. Um, YouTube is the only one where you have to search Pilot Pass Podcast or Pilot Pass Pull in a Bazana. Because um, apparently there's a lot of um, pilot instruction videos that teach you how to pass your fight instruction classes. So uh, you'll get a lot of those. You need to pull in a Bazana. 
um, when you type pilot pass. But if you want, you can just listen on YouTube if that's the only way you can get it. It's just a static picture. Um, for our Patreons, it's pilot pass. But the nice thing about it is if you become a Patreon, you get to see the live videos that Matt and I shoot when we actually do this, our Zoom calls to each other. And uh, those are viewable to the people that contribute um, to the show. We're going to be uh, starting a store that will be attached to the website. We're looking forward to that. Um, I'm, we're thinking mugs and T-shirts to start off with. I thought we would get some pilot caps, but those things are darn expensive before we even have any logo put on mm -hmm. them. So I, uh, I was like, no, no on that idea. Edible but underwear? Is that on there? The edible underwear is on there. Um, it's edible technically, but it doesn't taste very good. It's black licorice. So um, I don't know why. I guess it was so cheap because no one really wants to eat black licorice. It's got a little asbestos in there, but that just, you know, it's a low level. Like It's a low level, yeah. yeah. Just enough to graze the lungs. Yeah.